So, we're back with another review and gameplay. I've just finished what was 34 hours and about 38 minutes. A little over 34 and a half hours to complete The Last of Us 2. I have a lot on my mind. Basically, if you're not familiar with what my review and gameplay is, it's basically me going through the game and reviewing everything I see, hear, touch, feel, all that wonderful stuff. Um, so, I'll touch on a little bit of everything. There's a lot. There's a lot here. I have a lot to, to go over. Um, I will say this. I did play The Last of Us 1 twice. I played it right before playing 2 just to get a refresher, have that fresh feel going into this game. I will try to keep from spoiling the game as much as possible. I will discuss both characters in the game. I will show and talk about certain locations. I'll stay away from in-game content. Uh, and of course, a lot of the story content, when I do talk about it, it won't be specifically tied to certain events that do transpire or take place. Um, that's going to affect you if you play the game. Because I certainly don't want to, to spoil it in any way. So, I will start off by saying that in my 34 and a little over a half, 34 hours and 38 minutes playing the game, there was quite a few good moments. I actually enjoyed a lot. Um, but there were, there were some things that... I didn't care for so with that said stick around we'll jump into it we'll get into the graphics and attention to de detail first and then following that I'll, I'll get into the other aspects of the game uh, gameplay music so if you've watched any of my past videos you'll notice I, I do like do like focusing on water physics and snow because I feel like sometimes those are some of the harder things to capture in a game and Obviously, we uh, come across this little brook or stream in the game, as Bob Ross would say, "Gonna paint a happy brook." Well, I would consider this a happy book, a happy book, a happy brook, Bob. Um, you can see how the water creates the little foam popping up. I mean, it did a really, really good job. I love how the water just has this natural feel to it. The light. Seems like it reflects off of it pretty well, especially as you move around. Some really good stuff. I like that. I think they did a fantastic job. I like, also like uh, the bugs. You can kind of see the bugs off to my right. Um, they're, they're moving around a little bit, and you generally will find that. Actually, they're moving around pretty good. They don't hover in one specific spot. You'll uh, definitely see that when you come across areas like that in the, uh, the real world. So something I had to try that I haven't had the opportunity was to see when the character gets wet. In this case, we're taking Ellie and I'm dipping her in water. Um, as she comes up out of the water, you can see the water actually dripping off of her. And you can clearly tell that her backpack and her clothes are soaked. Even her hair, because it uh, has darker spots on it. It looks wet. You can see the light shimmering off the water on the, the clothes and backpack. So... I, I do like that attention to detail. I think that's uh, certainly important now. Let's see if she leaves wet footprints. Um, couldn't tell. Let's see. Maybe I can tell if I come up in this area here. Yeah, I don't see necessarily wet footprints. So another little cool detail I want to show is if you brush up against trees with snow on them, the snow will actually come off. So I thought that was kind of cool, just uh, more attention to detail that they paid to the game, or paid attention to in the game. So let's see if I can catch that again. There it goes. You can actually see the grasshoppers fly up out of the grass, and I'll be honest, I don't know that I've seen that too often in games. That is a really, really cool little experience. Uh, I certainly like that as well. Very cool. Oh, I love the fact how he's walking through the snow and he's uh, leaving tracks. Really deep tracks as he moves. That's really, really cool. Let's see. Oh, that's, there we go. 
this is what I was talking about earlier, just more of a messiness with the snow as you're walking around. Very, 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 very cool. Kind of looks like a, a Mickey head. So here's a cool little feature I noticed as soon as I jumped in the water. You can actually see the tadpoles uh, swimming around, um, which is really neat. I don't think I've ever seen that in a game before. Let's see if I move. Yeah, you can see them as I move. They'll they'll move around. And you got the floating leaves on top of the water as well. well that's uh, that's pretty cool. Definitely uh, like again another little attention to detail. They put a lot of love in this game, um, especially in the early hours. It's just incredible. You can hear the crickets, frogs. Yeah, very cool. So I actually think this is kind of cool because I don't tend to see it or notice it a whole lot in games when you talk about shadow and lighting. And as I'm sitting here, you can see as the trees move off behind me or in front of me, if you will, it's actually projecting this flickering shadow on the van over here. And you can see how the lighting is changing more specifically on the seats and then a little bit on the hood because the trees are moving due to the wind physics in the game. So attention to a little detail like that that I certainly enjoy. You know, another cool thing is the lighting in the game when you go into to dark rooms. I mean, it's really dark. And the original Last of Us did a really good job with the flashlight. And I feel like flashlight in this case is done very well again. I mean, it definitely reflects very well. Uh, off of the walls, uh, water sources. Um, just to, again, uh, it's something I, I really enjoy uh, when you enter some of these rooms of just how it feels more true to life. Um, and again, I said it before, one of my favorite things in this game so far has been just exploring um, versus anything at all. I mean, I've enjoyed the story so far and I want to learn more about what's going on and what's happening. But just exploring, looking at the details in the game, that's probably the bread and butter for me. So, at this point in the game, the landscape changes up drastically from the very beginning of the game. Um, you go to a, come from a snowy, mountainous region into what appears like this green, foresty region. I've never uh, been to the Seattle area but I could only imagine it's something kind of like this in certain areas, a very green. So this is quite the change and a welcome change for me. Um, while I love snow, it was very dark and gloomy. Uh, this, this is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, beautiful. Um, something I did test that I wanted to point out was I wanted to walk through the, the puddle to see if the horse left footprints. And as you can see, it actually does so I, I love the fine attention to detail in this game i know i've probably talked about that a, a million times so far but uh it just it it's incredible i mean you go from the horse leaving footprints and mud puddles to snow falling off of trees as you brush by them and that's something that i don't feel a lot of games capture and it really kind of pulls the player in to that that game and what it's trying to convey to you to make you feel it's that level of immersion that I, I just dearly enjoy even just listening to the the birds the different birds and then the leaves falling in the distance that's just incredible it really pulls me into it I noticed in this area that I wanted to point out when you played the last of this one you kind of felt like you know obviously years had passed and trees were starting to you know cover stuff up bushes were starting to cover stuff up um, the, the, you had an overgrowth that was started to transpire in this game they've actually feathered that um, at first i wasn't really sure i mean yeah you're kind of coming through this area and there are cars in the middle of the grass i'm like well how did these cars get here this is essentially a road if you look at this looks like this is a bus stop right here and then you have these uh, street lamps, lights, that are here. And uh, if you come up here and you look, 
this is a crosswalk button. So this used to be a crosswalk area at some point. So I like that. I mean, it's they've actually progressed the game to the point to where now the world that it was before has become something completely different and almost unrecognizable because of the amount of time that's passed and the overgrowth that has happened. And I find that really cool. At this point, I, wish, I want to take a, a minute or seconds to focus on the audio and some of the things that you can hear. And of course, I, I mean, I can't play part of this without mentioning just the music. It really has this beautiful score to it that suits the game. I will say some of these battles that you get into with certain enemies in the game definitely can get pretty intense. Yeah, the music here is pretty intense. And the sound of that gun echoing off the hall is incredible. So we can throw a it looks like they're trying to flank. Hey, hey! To your left! On your left! That's a cool thing too. Nina definitely does help out. Jesus, certainly flanked very well, but yeah, the combat in this game is pretty awesome. At least that that aspect of the gunplay. I'll show more of the uh, of the fighting mechanics. Except for right there, let's see if we can rush him. Probably not a good idea. There we go. Almost died doing that, but gonna get the uh, aspect of level of intensity and brutality in this game. No, it's pretty insane. Definitely, a, a just very brutal. Of course, you know the first game showcased that a lot too, but it's uh, very brutal. But I wanted to show that even though I could have done that differently, different approach, kind of get the aspect of uh, how the the game plays. So real quick, I wanted to point out that you do have crafting skills. Um, looks like as you go through the game, you collect pills. Pills give you the ability to do modifications. So as you can tell, as I scroll through some of these, this is the stuff that you can actually upgrade. Um, so as I go through the game, you'll probably see, without a doubt, me doing these upgrades. But definitely wanted to point that out. You do have that. Um, looks like you have your crafting menu, which was looks more or less kind of like what we had. A little different setup, but uh, same concept as the first game. And, of course, you have your journals as well, um, which is kind of interesting. You can go through that and read those as you uh, write notes and come across information through the game.
you know, as I'm looking at some of the upgrades, and Abby's upgrades are obviously different than Ellie's, what I really didn't care for is how some of the upgrades are locked behind other upgrades you may not necessarily want to use. So, for instance, crafting shivs kind of follow suit with my stealth approach to the game, but listening mode speed um, grabbing enemy basically for fast repositioning and faster prone movement so they've put three of these being able to move faster in like a position type situation ahead of being able to craft more shivs i think i would have liked this craft tree or skill tree if you will to have been done maybe a little bit different um, generally you'll see like craft shivs and then if you want to upgrade to that uh, like to the craft more shivs it would be followed after that maybe from left to right I, I just some of these don't make sense to me and how they're organized and it just it makes it really tough with the skill tree in order to unlock certain things that you might want to be able to utilize before other things that you may not predicated on your play style so my recommendation is if you're playing the game just be cognizant of that fact as well that some things you may not have access to predicated on the type of build because there are going to be other things that you may not find you useful to what you're trying to do so a little frustrating in that aspect so this is pretty cool too i haven't really talked much about it but you can well not in this case, you can't. You can break certain pieces of glass in the game. So, like, I just busted the back side of this. Um, you can break the glass on windows. You can break the glass on vending machines, which in some cases offer up the ability to um, find items on the inside. I noticed that earlier in the game uh, definitely had that. I'll be curious to see later on how many more vending machines we do come across. But uh, very cool. We've got a little map here, too. kind of shows where we're at inside the city. And, of course, you can open up, you know, your own map. Uh, if you scroll over, um, one of the things that I, I do like um, when you pick up the maps. I really didn't find that I used them a lot in The Last of Us 1, but here you actually do. And she makes notes on it where you're currently at, so it shows that. Uh, so that that's a really cool little thing um, if you're trying to keep track of where you are currently at in the game. I feel like The Last of Us 1, you just didn't need it because the areas were not as big as what they are here. So it's a little easier to kind of figure out where, where you're going. Uh, breaking windows. You can break windows you'll find in this game in order to access another location. And... Um, that seems to be the case here. So just keep that in mind when you're playing the game. If you can't find a way to get through somewhere, bust the window and crawl through or climb over. You might actually be able to get to that certain goal that you're trying to reach. Many puzzles. What I've noticed as I've progressed through the game is that the puzzles are a little different this time. In this case, there's this truck on the street you can get inside the truck there's some loot then i notice you can jump on top of the truck and then there are ledges here the door down below is locked but you can go up to the windows you can actually bust the window come on the inside and then loot the inside of the building and in some cases like this door over here was locked so you couldn't get into it so basically the puzzle then takes me to going back outside and I noticed you could actually jump across to this side over here and the same thing applied. I noticed, hey, I could bust the window, then hop on the inside and then start looting the room. And this is something that I've noticed throughout the game that transpires more often as you, like I said, progress through these little hope open hub area areas and you end up looting these rooms uh, in typical fashion as I'm doing now to get parts in order to open up your inventory so that you're able to uh, craft weapons as need be and then of course sometimes you'll find uh, upgrade manuals or um, in this case um, notes stuff like that you can read to give you a little bit better background on what's transpired so anyway I thought that was really cool that they've kind of evolved 
some of the puzzles in the game by making you think about breaking windows and climbing and then going under uh, areas instead of just taking and moving a ladder or um, in this case they also implemented ropes so you'll use ropes to get from one side or to another or uh, maybe reach a window that you previously couldn't you know access so keep that in mind um, when you're looking at reviews that some of these that say that there are not puzzles in the game it's not necessarily the case i think the puzzles have evolved into a different fashion sound like a no i got so good in mind too it's my accent come on stop being paranoid So I really haven't encountered too many bugs in the game, but I did notice this uh, floating cup that's in my game. I don't know what he just grabbed. Hell, for all I know, there's a whole con cooler container that's missing here. No idea, but uh, you may experience this or may not, but I do like to show these in games because if they're glitches or bugs that do Come on. pop their ugly heads or present, then... Uh, Definitely something you might encounter. Or that I've noticed has happened on more than one occasion is like when you enter certain areas and you're checking rooms. And unfortunately, I can't show you because I'm locked out of the area. You can't go back. So in this case, I was going through searching the perimeter of the rooms because that's generally how I, I play as I go through. I search the perimeter, then I'll search the interior middle of the rooms. And so as I was searching the you know, perimeter and going around the walls, I came across an area. And once you go through that open area, it triggers a cutscene, and then of course you're locked out from going back. So unfortunately, I missed on the inside like half of the rooms. And that's one of the things, again, that has happened more than once in this game so far. And it, it really sucks because I don't know what I missed. So here's another instance that I talked about to where sometimes when you want to explore and you're not sure if you go a certain way, if you can get back. I really didn't think anything about going underwater to kind of peek around. Unfortunately, the current carried me through and up underneath this, this bus or train or whatever this is. And unfortunately, you can't get back. It doesn't matter how hard I swim. There, there is no no getting back and what's irritating about that is you should be able to and there was a building that building right over there that I started to explore and I stopped because I wanted to look around in other areas because of that fact because sometimes opening a door or crawling through a certain location it won't allow you to go back being that it's a linear game it still funnels you all into one direction so while it appears that you have multiple paths you really don't and that is one aspect that I really wish that they would have fixed with this game because I do not like being locked out of not being able to go back and in instances like this you know I understand story progression but there should be no reason that I can't go back up underneath so just something to be cognizant of as you're playing this game. Um, to be very careful when you're exploring. And if you leave a certain area and decide to look at another area, you may not be able to go back to that previous area. So I came across this area. It's something I wanted to point out. And I see this in a lot of games, not just necessarily this one. And it, I wouldn't say it's a bad thing, but I'm not a big fan of boundaries or invisible borders or boundaries in games i understand the need for them but in this case you know in real life you'd be able to kind of progress past this brush there's an opening to the right of that tree and to the left of this uh, you know overgrown brush area and you can in life you'd be able to push this away or maybe basically cut it back or something like that and on the back side of this area it looks like there's an opening and then a building up top up there that i'd love to be able to, to get to and it's possible you can get to it by another avenue, but being able to have a shortcut like that that kind of pulls the player in with the ability to open up a different path creates a sense of immersion that I feel would be absolutely incredible in games. And also, you know, having a cracked door like this, it would be really cool to be able 
to have a prompt or something that allows the player to open it. Um, unfortunately, it's just kind of stuck there. In real life, I would walk up to this vehicle and I'd be like, hey, what's inside? I mean, it's that curious instinct that drives that type of nature of, let me, let me try to open the door. Does it create another problem? Does the car roll off, make a ton of noise, and, you know, you have a horde of zombies come in? Maybe so. But I think having options like that in games is something that would be really cool. And, again, it just adds another level of immersion that we currently don't see. So, in this area, one of the things I noticed, it seems like a lot of the windows are boarded up. And when I cross through here... At first glance, I thought, hey, maybe I could enter this window that's busted, but unfortunately it's boarded up too. I would have liked to have seen um, some of these areas that tend to be closed off due to invisible boundaries uh, that you can't get to that are in a distance. Or in this case, these doors and windows that would, I think, provide more immersion for the player to explore but you can't. I would have liked to have seen these opened up, or maybe even if they're boarded, you could have walked up to them, you know, hit it, and it busted it open, or something of that that nature that allowed the player to uh, go on the inside. A um, little disappointed in that aspect that we can't, because I really, really feel that this is a, a very cool area, and you'll come across, I feel like a lot of these in the game, I've come across them uh, a lot f to this point and um, maybe a missed opportunity like like for example um, I'm looking up there's an open window right there there's another open window but you can't even get to those and I just I really want to like dive in and get up there and look around and see what I can find so a little disappointed So another thing I've noticed here recently, more so as we've I've gotten further into the game, is as I'm trying to strategically plan out hiding behind cover or going to a certain spot, Nina will just arbitrarily like cut in front of you, like front of you, and cut off your path. So like right there, she'll just cut right in front of you and block you off. And unfortunately, in cases like that, or like in this case where she's blocking me on the left it could cause you to accidentally get killed or in in some cases just be spotted by the enemy and I've actually had that happen a few times to where um, I had a perfect line of sight to go to a specific cover spot and she like hurried up in front of me and blocked me off and, and stole that spot and it left me exposed so I don't know what the deal is with her AI in that sense, but it does seem a little bit off, uh, especially if there's danger nearby to where she feels rushed. She will have a tendency to cut in front of you, so something to just be aware of. You know, at the end of the day, if someone were to ask me, if I would recommend this game, I would say that if, if you like The Last of Us 1 and you don't really have any issues, which I didn't have any issues with any type of sexual preference or any type of push agenda in the story, that that didn't bother me at all. Um, if you enjoy zombies, if you enjoy, I'm going to use the term open hub loosely, if you enjoy that type of game, if you enjoy crafting and looting and a very story driven game, I would say maybe give this a shot, but give it on the shot with an open mind. Uh, I would probably catch it on a sale. I didn't pay full price for it. The, the issues that I had really started to pop up more so towards mid late game um, I, I'm going to go in that 20 to 25 hour range and it really had nothing to do with playing Abby as a character I actually enjoy playing Abby Abby offers different skill sets that Ellie didn't have um, I kind of felt like the areas that you encounter with Abby were more platforming and you were dealing with more enemies that were a human uh, versus the infected um, you will encounter 
a few different enemy types in the game versus the last game, um, but nothing too drastic. I kind of wish there were more in that sense. But um, my my biggest issue was after about that 25 hour mark, I really felt like a lot of the Abbey could have been that that gameplay, or that story could have been shown as a DLC. I really would have liked to have seen more um, interaction with uh, Joel. Um, and also just other characters that you come across, uh, like Tommy, I uh, would have liked to have seen more in that regard. Um, so it just, the game started to, to drag. I mean, it's one of those that I, I said, it felt like watching a, a really good movie in the beginning. And then you get to that midway, a little over midway point, And you start to feel like it's starting to drag on a little bit too long. Um, also felt a lot of the areas with Abby weren't as open hubbish as they were with Ellie. Uh, one of the biggest parts in the game you'll encounter very early on, um, which is the the Seattle Day One for Ellie, and that area is pretty pretty vast, um, and you get to do a lot of searching. I would have liked to have seen more utilization of buildings that you could have went into. Um, I definitely felt like as the game progressed, they kind of opened it up a little bit more in that regard. I enjoyed a lot of the puzzle solving. I thought that. Uh, they kind of went about it a, a little bit differently in this game uh, than the last. The last had more usage of ladders. Uh, move this object, place it here, move this crate. Kind of really didn't do that a whole lot in this game. It was more about what door, what window, what area I could crawl through, crawl under in order to get to the next area. Uh, how do I open this safe? What what type of documentation or code do I get? How do I get that? So I kind of enjoyed those things. Um, I thought they, they were done pretty well. Um, but overall, I would say that it's not a bad game. It's not a horrible game. I just didn't enjoy it as much as I would have liked to. So hopefully you enjoyed the review. Um, if you did, just make sure to leave some comments in the comment section down below. Hit the like or dislike button. Let me know what you thought if you played the game, if you agree or disagree with uh, my thoughts. And I would love to, to hear what everybody has to say about it. Until next time, you guys, peace out. And catch me on the next review and gameplay.